Welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. In today's tip we're going to combine two powerful modeling techniques that are often thought of as separate patterns and family tables. Family tables are typically applied to parts and or subassemblies with the same as except rule applies. Though with patterns of features the instances may vary greatly. With patterns of components the instances must be identical. So what if you need a pattern of components where each component varies with respect to their assembly? For example, let's take a look at a frame that might need to be filled with, say, a, an array of bars like louvers in a grill. Some arbitrary shape that needs to be filled with louvers. What would you do? You might start with a copy of all the interior surfaces this is the area that we want to fill and then I'll run an extrusion that represents one of the bars or louvers in this case. Now this extrusion is created in such a way that I can modify its value and place it anywhere within the outside profile. I'll then offset all the existing surfaces here and solidify using that offset that gives me an, uh, a little clearance between my bar and the face. I'll then convert this to sheet metal and create a flat pattern. So now I've got a flat pattern representation of the sheet metal that fits anywhere inside the frame. I'm going to suppress the flat pattern for now. So, if I modify the value, let's say I go out to 18 with it, regenerate, I have a little bar that fits the contour on both sides and I've got the flat pattern. If I modify the value down to say, let's try 1, update, it's fully valid as well, complete with the end conditions appropriate lay it out flat, put it on a drawing, send it to my laser jet, water jet, however you want to do it. Fully appropriate. But let's say I want to pattern this. How would you do that? It's this value right here that I want to pattern. But I really can't pattern it. So what I'm going to do is make a family table. Make a family table where I'm going to add a column and the column is going to be a dimension that dimension right there, middle mouse. Call that done. And now I've got a family table. Now, I could make an instance and then I can pattern using the family table function. But the family table function here will create the instances but won't allow me to modify the increment between them. And if I change my mind about something, I have to edit each one individually. I don't know how many I'm going to have ultimately in my design. An alternate option then is to use Excel. Take a look at this. By clicking on the Excel button, I'm jumped, I jump straight into Excel where I can start with the value of say 18. Maybe I want something less. I can change my family table instances names, maybe something that's a little more appropriate. Now, this is Excel functionality that I could start to use. Maybe I don't want to use that, I just want to copy. And then what if I take these and run them down? You see how they increment nicely? And now I can take my 18 here, and now I can add my increment, where I can say with the equal sign, equal this value, the cell just above, minus the increment between them. Maybe uh, let's start with two inches. So now if I click this cell and just drag it down, I can see that I, I don't need a tenth instance in this case. When I call this done, I'll just close out Excel. It'll ask me if I'd like to uh, incorporate these changes. And sure enough, there in my family table, I've got my instance name, my 
common name the way I want it and my increment of all my instances. So now if I retrieve an instance, it will be the correct one. Well, how do I use them in the assembly? Let's go back there now. I could add an instance that is that louver and I'll add instance number one. And I'll assemble it by default, middle mouse. Add instance number two by default and so on and so on. Okay, so now I've got all my instances assembled and it sure looks good. But what sort of flexibility might I have now? Well, what if I decide to change my mind or the ID guy comes back and changes his not mind about but some sort of shape. All the instances as well as all of their flat patterns update. What if I want to change the spacing? Well, how would I do that? Go back to the generic, update its family table. And I could change these numbers individually. But what if I want to change the increment to be instead of two, maybe one and say five eighths? Well, let's do that in Excel. And now it's very simple where I could change, let's leave the 18 alone and let's change this from minus two say to minus, uh, let's change it to minus 1.56 and then take this one and drag it down. And you'll see that updates all of our numbers. And it looks like it looks like I'm going to need a couple more of these instances as well. So I'll just add a few more. Very easy, very flexible. Incorporate the changes. There they are. And when I go back to my assembly and regenerate, sure enough, they all scoot together. How nice is that? And of course, I could add a few more and so on. And there it is. Well, I hope a little of this made sense to you. I hope you get the idea that using Excel in conjunction with family tables and a skeleton or top-down approach, you can combine the power of patterns and family tables, maintaining the parametric relationships between individual components and with respect to the assembly in which they live. My name is Leo Green. I hope you enjoyed this video tip of the month. So long now.